Hey everyone, working on my 4720 again. Um, today, I finally got tired of this. It's not a huge issue, but the hydrostatic uh, pedals, they return back to neutral, fine, uh, but the tractor still seems to want to creep forward and backward, more or less whatever direction you were just traveling in. It wants to stay in that direction even once you let off the pedals just real slowly creeping um, and that's not the worst thing in the world but when you're doing like loader work or I have that uh, big barrel of diesel over there on a pallet and when I'm trying to load that in my truck the last thing that I need is to be focused on working the loader and you know the tractor decide all of a sudden it wants to creep forward uh, you know especially it's it's really bad on hills it seems to I guess, you know, build up resistance with gravity and then the engine starts to rev up a little bit to make up for it, maybe, I don't know. So, trying to diagnose this, uh, the first thing that I've checked, so I'll, there's a panel here normally and you gotta move the floor mat. The first thing that I checked was this, let's see if I can get you in there. This spring or this uh, spring tensioner right here. So there's a uh, lock nut there. Uh, you know, you basically tighten it to pull this up. And what that does is it pulls that spring up as well. Um, so that spring is attached to what the manual calls the neutral return bar, which is essentially a little uh, bearing on a stick that has that spring attached to it. So when you let off the pedal, that spring returns it back to neutral. And then this plate is designed with a groove in it that's supposed to be right at neutral. Um, so started off there, I tightened it, I loosened it. It didn't really, it actually made no difference. Um, well, I, okay, I'll take that back. It made reverse worse and forward it almost fixed. So I thought, okay. Took a look at the shop manual, not a lot of details, but something that I did think about, this is a 2016, um, you know, it's obviously, it doesn't have a ton of hours, it's got about, I think, 410 hours on it, but, you know, pretty much constant use of these pedals, right? So, I thought, okay, maybe the problem isn't with the linkages, it's with the actual input itself, so... That right there is the input shaft to the hydrostatic, uh, I guess, switch. Not really a switch. I uh, can't think of the word. Valve. Uh, valve. Uh, squash plate, whatever. Ultimately, that's where it links up. I'm thinking that perhaps there's some slack in that. I'm kind of assuming the shaft ultimately ends up in kind of like a ratchet end maybe or something to that effect. Again, the manual is pretty useless. Uh, so what I'm doing now, there are three bolts to take this off. Uh, one here, one there, and then one on the other side of this. Looking with the camera, I might have missed one, another one, I can't tell. I don't think I did. Um, I don't think I did. I'm gonna to try to take this whole pedal assembly off as one. Uh, you know, the only thing really attaching it, that's the reverse switch right there. Uh, you just, you know, pull it out and there's that spring uh, and then those bolts. Otherwise, there's really nothing attaching this. You know, it's not attached. This is the gas tank here. That's a poly, uh, some type of plastic tank. It's not attached to anything on this side. So I'm going to remove this entire assembly uh, it is a pain in the ass to get in there. I'm trying to run some extensions through these holes. And I'm going to try to take a look at the actual uh, you know, valve input itself and see if maybe I need to shim that a little bit. Uh, maybe I can take some slack out of it. Maybe that's what's causing this. Because like I said, best I can tell, all of this is working just fine. And it's, I mean, the smallest, as it starts creeping, it's the smallest, like, you just kind of tap, I mean, absolutely most minuscule little motion you have to do to get it to stop uh, for on the opposite pedal. It's, so, I mean, you know, 
it's returning to neutral on the linkage fine. I'm thinking it's just some slack uh, because another thing I've noticed, if you come off the pedal fast, you know, you just gun it and then you let off, you know, jerk the whole damn tractor around, it generally won't creep uh, or it'll do that and then it'll start to creep after it stops entirely. Just make, and you know, I don't know, makes me think that there's something else going on. Uh, there should be an oil damper here that I've removed that maybe was pulling it back, I don't know. So anyway, I'm recording this just in case this works and I will get back to you once this is off. Okay, so I'm back. As you might can see, I had to uh, do a little bit of surgery. Uh, basically, I, need, I needed this to scoot a little bit so that I could get this whole bracket out of there. So the way this works, it's got you know the pedals, that mechanism, whatever. They turn the shaft that, sure enough, has more or less a you know square drive, square shaft, whatever. On this other side, uh, when you put it together, there's a hole in it. Um, there's a coupler, and you run a bolt through it, tighten it up, and that tightens up the whole assembly. So you might know where I'm going with this by now. The other side, now I haven't touched this other uh, side of the coupler. This, uh, I couldn't see it where I was. In retrospect, I probably could have found it, um, but there was no way for me to know that it was loose. But look at that. Look at all that slack in there. I could almost just take that thing off. So, uh, what's happened here, and you know, these probably aren't helping either. But, of course, what's happening is, you know, you push it forward, it goes forward, you let off. It's got all of that slack. Uh, so, and like I said, I haven't touched this bolt at all. I, what it is, it's not even really a bolt. Well, I mean, it is a bolt, but it's not even like a, this isn't like a welded nut. Uh, you basically run this down and then run the nut into it as well. Um, and this is threaded on both ends. That's just kind of like a stopper nut. So you could adjust it by taking a wrench, backing that nut off, and then driving the bolt forward. Like I said, probably enough room in here to do that uh, without disassembling the whole damn tractor, but I couldn't see it. And the service manual was less than helpful uh, with the diagram. So I'm going to clean out whatever this shit is. Uh, uh, maybe the... I hope it's on a mice nest or something. I'm about to stick my hand in. We'll see. We'll find out. Whatever. Uh, tighten this bolt up. Get some of that damn slack. Yeah, that whole thing. I could probably pull it off if I wanted to. Uh, get some of that slack out of there. And I would be willing to bet that the creeping will stop. All right. It's working. Uh, okay. So. Got her in second, uh, you know, medium range. Used to be, if I press the pedal. Oh, she's jumping out, damn. Let off of it, it would creep forward. It's not creeping. And what I noticed it will do is uh, if you're on a hill, it might uh, roll a little bit because it's actually returning to neutral but it is not doing what it was before. See, it's rolling just a touch because I'm on a little bit of a hill, but it's not lurching. It's, it's not, I mean, it, it used to literally just keep going almost like I had my foot on the, you know, about like this. Uh, I've got my foot on the pedal right now. It's not doing that at all anymore. That completely fixed the problem. That is excellent news. That was my most frustrating thing about this piece of equipment. All right. I uh, don't know if you could hear me when I was actually on the tractor. That completely solved the issue. Um, I did have a little bit of a problem um, if I was going uphill. Uh, it kind of wanted to, you know, the pedal kind of wanted to stick. Um, that, all I had to do was the same fix that everybody tells you to start with, 
um, adjust this. I'm going to put the lock nut on it next. Adjust the dad a little bit uh, stronger so that the spring has a little more strength, and it pulled it back. I guess when it's on a hill like that, it's, you know, uh, I'm guessing it's having to fight the, the motor, you know, wanting to keep, you know, basically not wanting to go back in reverse, almost like a like an automatic uh, transmission vehicle. I mean, you got it like a pill, it kind of idles up or kind of wants to stay in the same place. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Anyway, spring fixed that. The rest of it was entirely, again, it's the slack. It's this right here. And there is another one. Uh, well, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, you probably can't get to it without taking this whole unit apart, which sucks. But it, there's more than one of these adjustment bolts. This bolt is the adjustment for this coupler back here that's on the shaft here. But what actually goes into the uh, hydrostatic uh, valve there, uh, there's another one. It looks just like a ratchet drive. Another thing I'll tell you, I had to take this bracket uh, entirely off, you know, this glass piece off to be able to move the gas or the, the uh, diesel tank over enough for this to come out. It has to clear that coupler shaft. Uh, and so you got maybe what, I don't know, uh, an inch and a half, two inches. Uh, that you have to pull it out this way, and, you know, it is right up against this. Um, this frame is, at least on my machine, a bit out of square. I don't know how they managed to get it in there at the factory, but it was an absolute pain uh, for me to do so. I had to basically use the trick where, you know, you stick a punch or something in there and yank it uh, to line it all up. I, I don't know, uh, so just, you know, Watch out for that. Keep that in mind. Um, you know, I took the step off. There's a little wedge here. Uh, all of these are 12s. And then when you get to this bigger bracket, it's 14s. I may have mentioned that before. So, anyway, I think that'll do it. Um, I am excited. That was my biggest frustration with this machine. Um, you know, I've, especially, you know, working with the forklift attachment, loading something like that diesel barrel, you know, on my truck, didn't make that big of a deal when I had an older truck. I have a newer truck now. Really don't want to drive right through the tailgate. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Don't want to run anybody over uh, if I'm, you know, digging or, you know, I've, I've had, uh, I've helped people before, you know, lift like a sawmill into place. And I was, I had the, the, you know, the mill up here on the, the forks I had attached and, you know, the, I had a, you know, a guy here and a guy here trying to line it up on the, uh, the tracks. And I mean, you know, when you're sitting there fighting the tractor wanting to keep creeping forward, it's just absolute kind of nerve wracking, honestly, when you're working on other people. So yeah, definitely check this out. If the traditional fix, uh, you know, adjusting your spring did not work for you, uh, this might uh, you might also could just check this. This might be loose for you. This was absolutely tight for me, uh, but the other one wasn't. So, all right. Well, good luck with it. Uh, hope you all can get some use out of this. And Excellent. See you next time, maybe.